Everybody. My name is Todd Ryan. I'm going to be hosting this this session. I'm with a couple of gentlemen that I do a, a show with every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific anyway. So this is just a half hour. Chad Fokening and Paul Singh, we do a show called AI Domains and Web 3. And we always talk about, you know, basically Web 2. That's where we all come from. And then Web 3, where we're all going. So talk about bridging it. But uh, that is what our session is about today. First, I was going to uh, introduce the guys, but Paul, you had a good idea from earlier to say, here's here's our introduction to Handshake. So why don't you start, introduce yourself, and then how you got involved with Handshake. What's going on, gentlemen, <clears throat> and everyone in the crowd? Great to be here. Thanks to everyone uh, that put this thing together. It's amazing, you know, that at, from a community-driven, um, um, you know, perspective that we've We've all come together. There's no one behind, no company behind it that's promoting it. So first of all, just props to everyone that's put this together. Um, yeah, I got into Handshake. Uh, you know, I think it was a great set. The first session was great between uh, Jihan and Mike when they were discussing Clubhouse. Because, you know, at the end of the day, when COVID was happening, that's where we spent a lot of the time. It's dwindled down, uh, I'd say, a lot now. But, you know, in the initial days, we had um, Johnny Wu, Taishan, uh, Mark Johnson. These are the three people that would, you know, come into these domain rooms and start talking about Handshake. And it took me a long time to understand, you know, it, it's, I still don't fully understand it. That's the reason I like to hang out with people like Chad, uh, you know, from a tech savvy background, learn, learn from, uh, learn the, the technical aspects of it. And then, you know, from you, Todd, learn the business aspects of things from you. But that's kind of the thing, you know, you learn from these people. And there's no company that's teaching us this. So what do we rely on? Now I rely on Mike's videos. When Mike releases a video, I go in there and, you know, educate myself. There's no, there's so many community, um, just people in the community that we learn from. So yeah, that was my, my that was my introduction to this space was the three gentlemen, Tyshawn, Johnny Wu, and, um, and, and Mark. And uh, yeah, learned a lot from them. And so, yeah. Good. What's up, Chad? What's up, guys? Enjoying the day. It's another another HandyCon for number four. It's going to be notch those years off. It's going <clears> to <throat> interesting. So that is the, the good point about the uh, clubhouse versus whatever. So anyways, thanks to the sponsor, too, guys. Appreciate it. So, yeah, let's get down to it. 2.5, I think, right? That's our title. Yeah, I was going to uh, mention, too. Yeah, first, Paul, when you talk about Mike's Michael's videos okay. and stuff, you know, it, the Sky Include videos. He was mentioning it earlier, uh, you know, that there's no foundation. He just started making videos in 2020. And listen, I was watching one the other day to like, he, you know, basically, I know, you know, you and I lean on chat a lot, technical, but um, I was going to say there's some guys who aren't so technical, business savvy, Michael, for example, and he, uh, you know, just some great content. But no, I loved everything earlier. I saw that too. And that, uh, Jihan is motivating. He was he was motivating me at the very beginning. I'm thinking that's what I do. But uh, Chad, a uh, about when did you first uh, invest? You know, get some handshake names yourself, and then we'll start the session. Uh, two months too late. Uh, we were not on the uh, Genesis block, uh, and, and I wish I could go back and get some the original drop. Uh, that's when we could have got some of our other ones. Um, you know, we were. Did the domain space for 28 years. So I started next month, 28 years ago, in the DNS space. And I did go to the White House before ICANN existed. So um, some of the VCs that were investing in Handshake at the 10 cents were asking us to give us kind of a, their intake or their input of what this, you know, Handshake protocol could be and ICANN and stuff like that. So we learned about it through a couple of VCs asking us to do a consulting project with them. Uh, but we didn't invest. So we knew it was there. And then I think about two months after launch, um, talking with another friend of mine that's kind of in the Web3 space too, like, hey, this is you know, a good story, um, good narrative. We like the narrative. And really at that time, ICANN was just a bunch of idiots, I think getting ready to sell .org and some other stuff was just getting out of hand. So there was nothing else on the marketplace in the industry that was going to even give us 
any kind of leverage against ICANN and it had to be through a decentralized technology stack um, and like a protocol, like um, Handshake. So that's what, that's what lured me into it is, is a counterbalance or any kind of balance um, against the ICANN regime or power that, um, that they wield. That's how um, I got it. Well, no, I, I like it. I was going to say for those who don't, Real, real briefly, it was 1998. ICANN was formed, and that was to run the DNS, the domain name system, and the and the also the the IP addresses. But really, it was so to handle these cool names that were pointed to the IP addresses, and then security all around to make sure everything's secure. All right. Well, in '98 is when uh, you know they basically turned it from a government agency. Government said you, this needs to be a nonprofit. We'll keep it here in the U.S. It's here in California. This needs to be a nonprofit with governmental uh, influence or basically entities participating. Your own bylaws. So anyway, that was uh, I, I bring that up because um, later on when they offered some t new G's and some new extensions, and now there were sixteen hundred. I wanted to get to the, the handshake and the happening a little bit was. So Handshake all, had all these reserved and uh, everybody was wondering, is, was, it, is, was ICANN going to come over and get their H&S coins and get the money? Did they have something for VeriSign too? I have no idea. I remember, I think it was ICANN had a couple million. P Paul, what was that? Well, I mean, I, uh, I know everybody probably listening here knows. What was Todd, it? I spoke to, I, I was dedicated, I was the Handshake representative that pitched it on the public forum. Um, a, a two handshake, letting them know that they had six million dollars of handshake and it could feed a lot of people. <laughs> so, so, anyways, that was yes. Well, okay, so well, so, anyways, they get to, so ICANN didn't really care, and they didn't. Uh, I was going to say I don't think that they. I like that handshake reserved all the ICANN stuff, and I like the whole idea of a handshake. Meaning that was my whole point of getting into it. Was have we even got to that yet? Was uh, yeah, I'm Todd by the way on handshake and a lot of other stuff, but. I liked it because I thought at some point we're going to have plenty of websites that we build that are not that don't run through ICANN that are going to be these Web3 names. And I like this platform. Um, but then, uh, you know, what was pretty cool is the happening. And I saw Alex, you know, trying to get into it with the other guys, not say get into it, but get into the things. Hey, so what'd you guys buy? Were you buying stuff? I picked up another. I thought I picked up more than I did because I got a little over 200 handshake names. But uh, and I and, and we're going to talk about you know which ones I plan on first building on, but you know there's other things got priority right now. But uh, I was going to say uh, when it comes to uh, the the happening and taking advantage of it, Paul, what was some of your you know strategies? Because I know you picked up some things, but what did you do during the happening? What did you pick up, and what did you know? What did you bid? A lot of bids, and, and please tell us. You know, I uh, I went in knowing which TLDs I wanted to tackle because there were so many oh. I think that may be a good thing because you know the distribution uh, may have been yeah turn so video. um turn, turn my video off yes okay. there we go so um yeah, that was a strategy. You know, I, I wanted to go in. I, I wanted to get king for sure. And um, after I got that, I was like, all right, let's go for queen. I think I can do it. So I went for queen as well. And um, the, the three. And then login. Login, the reason I really like that, there's two reasons. Um, that was one of the first words that was, that tried to be transmitted on the internet. And they started with LO and I think it just stopped and they had to redo it. So that's one of the reasons. But the main reason is, out of all my .in names, out of all 400 names, login.in receives the most traffic by far. And so um, there's a lot, you know, that can be done with this. You know, every site needs a login. And so there's just so much that can be done. And I haven't really decided what, you know, which avenue I'm going to go. And that's part of the problem right now. Do you want to stake your name on um, Namecheap? Do you want to stake it on Impervious? Once it's staked and rooted, which means that, you know, if someone's registered in SLD on there, you're stuck. If someone registers something and they reserve it for 10 years um, and, and, you know, just keep renewing it for 10 years, you can't take your TLD out of there. And 
that's kind of my hesitation as to how do I proceed forward? How do I develop? Do I really want to go forward with this? Oh, Daddy comes out tomorrow, the largest registrar, and they provide us this option. And now I'm stuck over here in Namecheap and I'm unable to do business there. So that's my hesitation right now in this game. Um, I'm just, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see who is going to be the next one. You know, and I'm really grateful for Richard Kirkendall and, and just name cheap. And that's one of the reasons I'm very bullish on Handshake as well, is, you know, you see smarter people. <laughs> the reason you invest in Bitcoin, you see smarter people. Andreas Antonopoulos, these guys understood Bitcoin, you know, a lot earlier. And so you just listen to them and um, and hopefully, you know, we're, we're all going down the right path. But, yeah, that's my two cents here. Hey, hey Paul, the people are concerned about you in the chat, too. We appreciate it. They want to make sure Paul doesn't drive off the road. You better use the full uh, the FSD, Paul, whatever you do. Yeah, be careful. But, hey, we do this every week at this time, and the guy's doing this all the time. Usually he's going to Vegas. But, uh, Chad, you know, that question that was on the thing, what is you know what is what does Web 2.5 look like? I have an answer for that. But what do you, uh, what do you think? I know you go, uh, what do you think? What's it look well, like? I just, I just wrote down Web 4.0. I think Handshake's probably a Web 4.0 protocol, but um, to take back to the buying of the happening, right, the opportunity that was kind of presented up there, I'd like to kind of just readdress that, right? Because I think um, about a year ago, some 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 founders uh, got together in Austin, too, talking about a hard fork, soft fork upgrading. So it was nice to see that that progressed on its own and became that. Um, our, our strategy, too, is we had about 30 names picked out. Um, we had our two or three we wanted to win. Uh, and then we had, like, kind of, like Paul mentioned, you're, you're kind of, you're kind of been out there. So we put, we could have done a better job, but we got our, our, our four um, that we wanted because, again, Web 2.5 is I'm trying to build Web 3 systems on a Web 2.0 asset, i.e., I can, and then Web, you know, you know, TLDs like Handshake on a Web 3. That's a, you know, not even a DAO structure; it's a protocol structure. Is a, is, is really um, cypherpunk. Web three out there 4.0. Like we're talking, we're talking shit hits the fan with ICANN, the whole you know, root zone. That's probably not gonna happen. That's a good thing. Um, but handshake is really web 4.0 kind of. And so for me, we're trying to build web two assets and back them into web uh, like handshake. So we own like 150 server names.com. We back into that server on handshake. So when the decentralized compute, decentralized storage, decentralized AI. You know, these other um, distributed uh, systems that really are unstoppable, um, Handshake will be that protocol that fits right in to the ecosystem when that, when and if that market ever becomes that uh, needed and desired structure. That's, so that's how our buying pattern happens on the, on the happening. Yeah, and Chad, thanks for saying that about, you know, when you mentioned Web 4.0 and then going back to say, here's why you say that, because you're a, uh, you're saying handshake really is developed. I mean, uh, developed and set up that way. The reason, because when I was thinking about answer web 2.5, well, I was thinking, listen, apparently it's um, people in web three. And, and, and I got to say, I really enjoyed the last session. I had to get off there, but I had Chanko talking about, uh, she's awesome. Obviously I've watched her, you know, on here and thanks, uh, uh, Mike for inviting me here and, uh, and for taking care of this. I really appreciate the part of this but uh Django was saying about web two learning web three web three learning web two and web two that's all just got people we had experience with the internet i'm just a business guy we we feel obligated to learn web three this is new technology of course i'm going to use it i'm going to use it like you know I'm, I'm going through it and and the point is about it's whether a lot of people that started the younger people i can't help but they're young in Web three, do they want to learn Web two? You don't have to. No one has to. It's like sometimes you're like, I don't want, but it's it's like law school. There's some new laws, but you need to look, go to the whole thing, you know. And I love that session about trademark law. You know, I do a room domain name law, but um, it's because it is important. And you can, I will say this to get everybody going, and that is, um, yeah, you can't. Right? They want to say, don't call them domain names, which I sort of understand that, you know, now because when that. Uh, Paul mentioned that at this ICANN event way out here. He was saying, hey, they're trading on our goodwill. And you know what? When I think about it, yeah, I helped build some of that stuff. You know, I'm sure Tom in the last session knows. Yeah, you know, built that domain name. And Chad, you know, and then people using names. So I think uh, I don't care if people call them that, but I can see why people say 
hey, that's not really a domain name. But uh, I was going to mention, um, this is what it looks like when I forget what I'm saying. Oh, uh, about uh, uh, Paul and the trademarks. Um, right, you can't trademark a TLD. Well, they're telling you these new things aren't TLDs. All right, then we can trade. Maybe we can trademark them. Maybe they're not TLDs. So that's not an excuse. So there are going to be people, you know, and we've seen it, are going to want to start trying to, uh, they're using and they're going to try to trademark some of these extensions. And you know what? There's going to be some that are like engraved in stone on something. And you are basically, the law is, is. Todd, you're muted. Todd, you're muted. Hey, Todd, we can't hear you. Can't hear Todd either. Um, so yeah, I can't. I can't hear you. Um, I try. I try to trademark Dot Chain on the Handshake Protocol. So we own Dot Chain on the Handshake Protocol, and we did spend the money and try to trademark it. And we followed the unstoppable domains pattern. Um, got rejected. Somebody else is trying to register it now um, on another. Who knows? Um, and so I don't know. I, I, I trademarking brands and identities. I think what's nobody's talking about is the dot wallet loss domains and that trademark or that um, identity or that that legal will set a huge, huge precedent on handshake values of time stamping a, a brand identity on chain is more important than a trademark, in my opinion. So, um, just kind of being in the Web3 space, we see maxis all over. There's actually, you know, like the ENS guys, there's actually an ENS maxis group. And then you have people that are in HNS that are pretty much maxis also. You know, they. W w when I say that, I mean they don't have as much respect for ICANN. Um, that you know, I feel that you need to work hand in hand with both. You have to work hand in hand with ICANN because um, I'll give you one example. And I'm and I'm kind of confused about this myself. We were supposed to reserve all the TLDs. There is a TLD right now. That is dot D E S I Desi. It's both on ICANN. It's also available on Handshake. So that's my question. It, you know, now one of these got through the slip. This is just one example. It got through the slip somehow, but there needs to be a solution for this. And I understand there's no doubt. There's no one involved in this or anything like that right now. But the way I look at it is, they should be rewarded instead of being penalized. You know, if ICANN comes out in the next three, five, ten years, and they start releasing these new TLDs. I mean, we can't, I mean, on the handshake side, we're going to have to do something, you know? And the way I look at it is, instead of penalizing that person, that person should be rewarded. Okay, it's great, you own that TLD, but ICANN has now released it. So, you know, reward that person for for that TLD, but unfortunately, if ICANN is there, there's it's very tough to you know to butt heads against that organization is what i'm saying so web 2.5 you have to work hand in hand with it that's the way i look at it yeah paul you if you've ever been to an ICANN meeting handshake gets more done than i can in a 65 million dollar budget because nothing gets fucking done there they talk about a mission statement for 30 minutes with 15 people around a table and two of them talk on every single panel it's but again but they're the 800 pound gorilla Right. So it doesn't matter. Right. So they're in that position and they're in that structure and that thing. You don't deal with ICANN. ICANN doesn't really barely even know Handshake exists. Right. The only way to do it is with other value propositions, other network effects, other timing and stuff like like these things take many, many years. And but but ICANN doesn't recognize Handshake and they don't give a shit. So you don't negotiate anything because they don't care. They don't even know you exist. It, it's, it's, it has to take its own path and follow its own narrative. Even and negotiating. That, it's the fact it's more of not, not butting heads with that person, in my opinion. You, you don't want to bet how butt heads with, like you said, the 800-pound gorilla. Well, you want to play nice with them. And that's the reason, unfortunately, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not an unstoppable guy, but they've played nice with them. And you know they've gotten some sort of attraction I and mean, you look at what they just most recently the fact that they're able to go out to a nft community and launch the extension for that and we were able to do that why why wasn't we were we were able to do that for every single nft project out there you know and that's my question is because there is no there's not that one person there's not that matt guy that's behind unstoppable there is no guy behind 
handshake that's going out there to each community. And there's a few of us that do it, but we don't spend all our time and effort and devotion into this because, you know, the, the reward mechanism, you know, you're not getting paid for this. So, yeah, it's a give and take, you know, that, that's the give and take I see. Yeah. You know, I'd like to spit this out. You know, I think from being there and being frustrated with ICANN, I was also on another panel where for 40 years they've run the root zone server and it is one of the most fault tolerant, uh, well-designed computer system ever existed. So in one sense, we can thank, thank them for the value that they've created. It's called the internet, right? So that, that's one working group that's like, hey, we're, we're doing our job. We're fault tolerant. We're, getting our comp we're compressing our energy and compute down. And we're doing a job of value creation. So in another sense, you got this stuff over here. But I think identity is going to be the key, right? So if identity... And people want to start getting identity in the world of AI and deep fakes and all this other um, manipulation of profiles. I think that's where Handshake is built kind of for that. And then I think the SSL market, I think Chango, somebody was mentioning that out too, right? That's built into the protocol that's not really talked about to where if Handshake's in that SSL market and let's say five years when computer quantum or whatever is just crushing systems, um, because SLL has been broken and it's there is a possibility that could happen. Um, that's where Handshake hopefully has that other tool in the toolbox that hasn't been played yet and hasn't been discussed. That would then wake people up like an ICANN as a solution um, to a problem. Number one, like we sit in these uh, rooms and we, we talk to people on the Web2 space a lot. The number one issue, what is it? These names don't resolve. That's what they all, well, you know, my answer to that is it depends. If you want to use a resolver, you can resolve it. You choose not to use a resolver, but that's not going to get through. The thing is that what they say is it doesn't resolve on a mass level. You need to do something. You know, there's friction involved there to resolve these names. And that is kind of the issue. And, and that's kind of just a little topic that I feel if, maybe in the community-based effort. You look at what Dog with Coin did. They raised $650,000 to put that dog on the spear. You tell me that we can't raise that much to go get a .hns extension on that? I understand it's I can, I get it. But the fact is these things are gonna resolve. We have use case, we can show some people. It's not a double dot, it's not hns.2, it's just .hns. You know, I, I feel that that is an opportunity for a, you know, a community-driven um, objective here to resolve these things. Because we sit, Todd and I, we sit in these rooms. We, you know, the, the number one thing that we hear, they, we're, we're not going to invest in this. We're not even going to look at these because they're not domain names. They don't resolve. Well, now all of a sudden, if you have this .hns extent, if we own that, we're able to resolve all our names on that. And they look like regular names. The underlying asset of it was, asset will still be handshake. No one is taking that away. Yeah. You know, hey, can you guys hear me now? Good. Perfect time. What's up, John? Hey, hey, uh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm, I agree with uh, Chad here because it's only temporary. But Chad, this temporary could be 20 years, meaning this w Web 2 and Web 3 getting together. So we know all the companies that are saying, you know what, let's get your ICANN extension because listen, it's only 300 grand and we're going to take a fee it, and um, and we're going to get that for you. And why why some companies are out there saying we're going to help this company get this extension? I have no idea. Why would you ever do that? That that's like on a handshake telling people, "Hey, I'm starting an auction for this name that slipped through the cracks. You guys got to check it out." Why would you invite people over to bid you at ICAN? That's if you think that's the answer of getting the that extension. Like, you know what? This company's a web3 company. We're going to get their extension. That's like Paul saying, the HNS. I'm saying no, no, no. Now, if you if you want to do it because you have to build a fucking, you know, but there's the big ship, which is I can't, I mean, which is the traditional DNS. And now we're all going to build some ships. And the guy, the gentleman said in the chat, I love the chat, uh, was saying, yeah, until some stuff's built on here. Well, what I would recommend about the building is like, I'm going to build a gaming and I use gaming like the old people, like gambling. Gaming to me means gambling. OK, but still, I'm going to use for gambling where it's a, a handshake, it's a name, and then you're going to be able to go there and do auto bets, and it's going to be, well, you know, that's that's a plan there. But still, I'm, I'm being patient knowing uh, 
like, you know, I listened a lot to Chad. He's like, hey, this is this is Web four. Why would I want to connect it in any way to, uh, you know, traditional DNS? And especially I'm not wanting to. So this definitely not. But all these Web two, you know, Web two point five companies that I'm seeing from some of our friends in the domain business, because the best Web two point five company, they have businesses. If you guys want to know how to bridge it, go to the guys that are running businesses in Web point two if that's what you call it and that and you're like are you guys interested in tokenizing fractionized are you guys interested in all this stuff a lot of them are and then some of them are already going out of business but i'd like to say like distribution that's why right handshake has no distribution as identity but no distribution i can't control distribution of the root zone that's number one their most powerful organization because they have billions of people that go over this root zone server system um in there and so uh, uh, to mention just that, so I got to do the plug for Realty now, we've been tokenizing handshake names for four years. And so, and then in our smart contract protocol, we try to build governance and stuff like that, but we can own 100% of that asset and build programmability around um, a digital native asset like a handshake protocol name. Hand, you know, with Web2 domains, they have distribution and they have other things, but they're centralized and they have to be beholden to these other things, timing mechanisms and stuff like that. But it, so until that distribution occurs, you, you'll have to play the other parameters of what makes Handshake an undervalued asset um, that gets recognized as having value. And it has several components to it, not just a good marketing team or a meme coin or a shit coin, whatever you want to call it. It really does, I think, fundamentally have technology. It's just 10 years, might be five years, 10 years, 15 years too early. Um, and we never know. But that's my rant. My take. You know, uh, we wanted to touch on the uh, the ten dollar the ten H N S renewal fee. I don't know if people haven't mentioned it. Maybe they'll be talking about it. Some great sessions anyway. Later today, there's some, and then tomorrow, like there's some teaching sessions. The the auctions in two days. The, this great HandyCon got off to a great start. Hope you guys have enjoyed some of the things that we're talking about. But we're going to mention uh, Namebase said it's going to be ten H N S per name to renew it for a couple of years. Which okay, we know it's pennies but paul what do you think is you know the people that have uh, sitting on tens and twenty thousand names yeah I mean, that may pinch a little i did the math on it i think for 750 names that comes out to about a hundred dollars a year i'm willing to have name base uh you know just continue with what i'm doing with name base you know it's it's still at the end of the day three you know ten handshake for two years right so it's still reasonable it's not it's not going to break the bank. But again, you know, for people that have sitting on those 10, which we have lots of people in our group that bought 4Ls in bunches, 12,000, 13,000 4Ls. Yeah, that's going to pinch a little. Um, and so there's options. You can go to Bob Wallet, um, you know, but again, you need that. Like, I haven't done that yet because to me, I feel Namebase is good enough as a custodial option for my names for um for, for my handshake names now bitcoin different story but yeah with with, with this i'm okay with it so far. so far yeah well chad do you even care about that because next we're going to talk about you know what you mentioned and that was uh the narrative you know relevance with regards to this crypto bull market or you think it's a bull market already that the hns token i mean you want to make some well, comments I mean, it's low liquidity but you know john mentioned you know People are on the hunt for low, um, you know, low value tokens that have fundamental values, right? So, or, or mechanisms that can come and be a market maker in there. So that's one potential. I think, you know, one thing that never always got me is Coinbase, you know, had, had fought and had to pay fines for, you know, listing non-decentralized protocols and tokens when it's like, I don't know too many other tokens and protocols that are more decentralized than the handshake. Uh, from a fundamental standpoint. So, you know, how does Handshake get like, come on, Brian, like you, if you're really staying core to this decentralized things, okay, tell us why and how we should get there. Because I think that that would be a, a watershed moment for Handshake if we can get on the Coinbase platform. And, and because it fits that narrative of this is what you're looking for, right? What that's gotta be liquidity. It's gotta be a liquidity issue. That's the only thing that I don't understand why Handshake isn't getting on Coinbase exchange. Some of these other exchanges, um, and so maybe some of that the pressure on there, but I, I don't know. I mean, I think again, I did step back for a, a, a year um, just to focus on other their op, other opportunity cost, 
And I think that's kind of where um, it's be, it's great to see these other people like Mike and stuff champion um, uh, the protocol forward and keep it kind of alive. So I'm much appreciated for those people. Yeah, before we uh, finish today, we still got about five minutes. I wanted to say that, you know, Mike really motivated me earlier to think it is. We're all directors. And just really, if you can, you know, take one of your names, build something on one of your names, learn how to build, go to Mike's videos. If you want do some very small stuff and really get, you know, uh, more familiar with it. I, I guess the thing is because it is going to be uh, as each year coming back to, especially to Handycon is, Hey, so now next year there has to be some stuff built. I, I, you know, should just put it on ourselves to build because uh, I know we're doing something that is, you know, someday we'll, someday we'll say something, you know, that we're doing something that's already using technologies from way back, you know, to uh, the future. And um, the thing is, it's not, you know, they are, they still designed stemming from URLs in web two. Okay. So, you know, I can't deny that that's where the business is today. But there are going to be some things, and it's probably going to be led by gambling, porn. Something will be will be uh, um, effective on you know in the future on handshake. Uh, Chad, what are you thinking? <laughs> Who am I thinking what? <laughs> well, what do you think is going to be uh, the stuff that first catches on with regards to the, what is something you know forms? What can be completely uh, decentralized? when I say safe, but I'm saying also built already, because I see some sites that are built now, but they're basic, you know. Look, we lo losing, zip, losing zip can hurt. You know, he went over to be Bitcoin core. Um, you know, we had some really interesting one man armies and stuff like that. So uh, impervious kind of pivoting back into Bitcoin stuff. So, you know, you kind of get that, Mike, you know, it's, it's an interesting, um, it's, it's hard to build on handshake, you know, right now. So, um, again, you, but you only need a couple of people that are building these, some of these tools like Coinbase, they're offering these services. But um, um, again, we're building it from a different architecture standpoint. We're not trying to get micro at the edges. We're, we're on a macro um, uh, a value identity architecture. So um, I don't know. I don't know. Again, I think it's one of those ones. I think one person can change a market. I've seen it before. Uh, we just got to keep that ethos and that identity and that uh, narrative uh, and stay true to that and and find the people that are talented that see that thing and that can build new tools and stuff and come in the market and stay alive. I mean, I think that's the key. But I think, but again, I'm excited, again, um, because it gives us an identity. It gives us a Web3 platform that we know is true uh, when we look at, when we peel the onion back as a, a truly a protocol that's decentralized that has no DAO and which is, you know, interesting to see from a business model just as fun from a from a technical standpoint of a business person building companies um we'll see where it goes i don't know no that's great hey uh, paul before we wrap it up i wanted to ask you about you know a lot of people here invest in handshake names and they buy them through name base just like we have. and i talk about investors they're thinking i want to sell it sometime and i love that we get a lot of offers through name base and I love the whole system. I love the Vickery auctions. I love the whole thing. That's why I love And I love that the guys over at Namecheap bought it, you know, do, you know, it's better than people, no one have an interest. But Paul, when it comes to um, the liquidity, you know, I don't think it's really ever going to be there. But I love how you talk about, you know, having these markets for certain types of names, meaning you loved how Vision does their thing. So um, what what do you think? Uh, what would be attractive for Namebase to build or or a new company to start that could you know get some fire in the domain aftermarket? I mean the H and S aftermarket. I mean it just doesn't even apply just to H and S, but just generally speaking, if you look at what ENS uh, Vision did for that space, that site single handedly propelled those those ETH names. Why? Because all of a sudden you have transparency and everyone is able to view the information at the same time, 24 seven. There is no secrets. You can go in right now and I want to know what the cheapest first name is on ENS. I can do that. Uh, the limit, the, I'm not able to currently do that on, on, uh, you know, within name base, but it's not, but the, the system can all be built out because the data is all the same. The first names aren't changing from handshake to 
to, from DNS to HNS to ENS. The hand, first names are the first names still. It's just you're moving the dot over, and now you just need to, you know, tie in some APIs together. And I believe if we can put something like that together, not only for uh, for handshake, but for Web2 names. I've said that if I want to buy a cheapest three-letter .com right now, where do I go? There's different sites you can go to, but what is the guarantee that you're getting the cheapest three-letter .com? If I wanted to do that for ETH right now, I can just go in there one click. I can see because it's cons they consolidate it. They've taken the data from all these different sites, gathered it, and presented it, you know, in a in a very organized manner, very intuitive in that sense. So, absolutely, I'm hoping that already there's that tool. We can do that with three letters in Handshake right now. He's built the tool. Aaron's built that out for us, which is amazing. But you know, we want different categories. They got Pokemon categories going in the ENS. I'm not saying let's get to that level, but you know, first names would be cool. I'd like to see what all the first names are and the cheapest one I can buy. What's the floor price? That's what we want to get to, right? We're, uh, and it's we're, not necessarily we're... the floor price because the floor price is what someone's offering. But it, yeah, yeah. Thanks, right. Paul. Thanks, Paul. That's it. They gotta they gotta shut us down. Um, but no, everybody enjoy the rest of the afternoon. There's some great sessions. Thanks for being here. And all you guys in the chat, I see you. Cool as ice. All right. Talk to you soon.